neurotoxic. If it is neurotoxic only bite, then there are two possibilities. Either it is cobra or crate. And what helps you to differentiate between cobra and crate is one, whether there is local reaction present or not. This slide talks about the syndromic approach for snake bites. So when you get an unknown snake bite, see whether the patient has got only the local reaction or whether he has got systemic envenomation. When he has evidence of systemic envenomation, then the differential diagnosis takes a little longer route. But if there's only local reaction, then there are two possibilities. Either he has got a non-venomous bite or he has got bitten by venomous snake, but the bite was dry bite. Okay, so either he has a non-venomous bite or he had a dry bite. But when there are systemic manifestations, see whether it is predominantly neurotoxic or whether it is hematoxic. If it is neurotoxic only bite, then there are two possibilities. Either it is cobra or crate. And what helps you to differentiate between cobra and crate is one, whether there is local reaction present or not. If there is local reaction present, then it is most likely a cobra bite. And cobra is notorious for causing significant local reaction. The swelling rapidly builds up. On the other hand, if there is no local reaction, then it's talking about crate. Why this differentiation is important? Remember this point. The neostigmine which we used for treating the neurotoxic descending paralysis is only effective in patients with cobra bites and is ineffective in patients with crate. Okay, so that may help us in differentiating or at least taking a finer decisions when managing the neurotoxic bites. When it comes to hemotoxic bites, Russell's viper is the commonest hemotoxic bite and it can cause all the spectrums that this slide is talking about. It can cause only hemotoxic manifestation. It can cause hemotoxicity and AKI. It can cause hemotoxicity, AKI as well as neurotoxicity as well as musculotoxicity. This entire spectrum is possible with Russell's viper. But apart from that, hemotoxicity only manifestation can be seen with soft scaled viper. And then on the other hand, uh, hemotoxicity plus AKI. Here when I say hemotoxicity, I'm primarily I'm talking about bleeding and coagulopathy. Hemotoxicity and AKI can be seen in patients with humped nose viper. And then the neurotoxic plus hemotoxic manifestations commonly in India is because of Russell's viper. Why this syndromic approach is relevant is because as I told you when differentiating between crate and cobra. Second, we don't have an antidote or antivenom for humped nose viper. So the India's polyvalent ASV basically covers the big four snake species, not the big five. When I say big four, it means crate, cobra, Russell's viper and saw scaled viper. So these four are what we call as big four. The big five includes apart from these four, the humped nose viper. And unfortunately, our ASV is not active against this. So India's ASV is primarily active against these four. And remember, these five species are responsible for more than 90% of venomous bites in India. These five. And if you keep the humped nose viper aside, still more than 85% of venomous bites are because of the big four. And the ASV that we routinely use is effective against 85% of the snake bites in India, poisonous snake bites in India. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.